Welcome back, students and teachers. Today we're going to be examining some documents that are coming from the Stanford History Education Group. There'll be a link in the description if you'd like to access the materials directly. Within the documents, we're going to be considering how likely we think it is that the civilization and Teotihuacan influenced other Mesoamerican civilizations like the Maya and like the Aztecs. So this map here actually does a great job of showing us the location of these various civilizations. So the orange colors here that we look at is the area around Teotihuacan. The Teotihuacan civilization, as we know from our key, is running from about 200 BC to 700 AD. The Maya civilization here is shown in this dark green around the Yucatan Peninsula. This civilization's in its, in its height around 200 BC to 900 AD. And then of course we have the Aztec civilization shown here in purple. And this is the civilizations in existence around 1400 to 1521. It's important to note that the Aztec civilization is in existence when the Spanish arrive. So this will be a big component of our future studies. So a few things that jump out at me as I look at this map and I consider trying to determine how likely I think it is that the Teotihuacan civilization might have influenced either the Aztecs or the Maya. So the likelihood of it influencing the Maya seems to be strongly related to time, right? These civilizations are in existence at the same time, although we do have a decent distance between them, right? It's not like they're right next to each other. They're close enough that, that there probably or, uh, was trade and interaction but they're not right next to each other. Now, the Aztec civilization, we have a separation of time, right? The Aztec civilization existed significantly after that of Teotihuacan, but the distance there right on top of each other, essentially. So it's, it'll be interesting to see how these elements play into the likelihood that I think Teotihuacan influenced these other two civilizations. So we do have some great visuals when it comes to trying to examine the civilization of Teotihuacan and also uh, some of the civilizations of the Aztec and the Maya for that matter. So it'll be interesting to compare and see, if do we see elements of potential influence from Teotihuacan to the others? This here is an image of Teotihuacan, a photograph. So it's a visited site, widely visited today. The civilization of Teotihuacan and the city of Teotihuacan had an elaborate city structure, roads, murals. It held a population somewhere between 80,000 and 150,000. This made it one of the largest cities in the world at the time. This here is the Pyramid of the Sun. So the Pyramid of the Sun is over 700 feet wide and over 200 feet tall. The city of Teotihuacan has three major pyramids, but the Pyramid of the Sun is the largest. So I'll be curious as looking at the style of this pyramid and having the opportunity to compare it with the pyramids of the Maya and the Aztecs. How similar do I think it is? How likely do I think it is that there might have been influence there today? Again, I'll point out this is a photograph. So this is a site that you can still visit today. So other visuals that we get here, we have art coming from the civilization of Teotihuacan and within the mural. So things that we really want to look at in terms of the art is depicting people. Uh, obviously, this seems like there would be people from the civilization of Teotihuacan. So how are they dressed? What kind of garments are they wearing? Do I see anything in terms of what they're doing? So I want you to kind of look at this, <clears throat> consider the style of dress that's being depicted, consider the various art, and we'll have an opportunity to compare the art from Teotihuacan to that of the Maya and the Aztecs. And we see here the courtyard of the uh, Teotihuacan civilization. Again, the colors, the brickwork, things that we potentially could compare. Now we get some uh, visuals coming from the Maya. And as we look at the, uh, the Maya city of Tikal and the pyramid here, uh, this pyramid does strike me as having some similarities with that of the Pyramid of the Sun, but also some differences. So I don't know that it's definitive one way or the other, but you consider, and you can even go back in the, the video and, and compare them, but how similar do you think the pyramid here at Tikal is to that of the Pyramid of the Sun? We have the Maya Astronomical Observatory at Chichen Itza. So again, 
some arche uh, archaeological uh, evidence here just maybe suggest some similarities. Architecturally, do I think it's similar to that of some of the buildings at Teotihuacan? And then the artwork, right? And we might compare uh, this statue and, and this etching from the Mayan palace to that of what we saw in the mural of Teotihuacan. So we have some Mayan monuments here. And again, we could compare these to the mural in terms of how the, the individuals are being depicted, uh, anything in the background. This element here, does it look similar? What do I think that they're doing? So make some comparisons. And again, you can rewind it and, and kind of go back and take a look. But how similar are they? How likely is it that there might have been some influence between these civilizations? And as we look at the Mayan writing that we have, this is a page from the Mayan book. This is coming from the 1200s. So studying the Mayan writing, looking and seeing, we don't really have much writing from Teotihuacan, but you can compare some of these characters that are used in the Mayan writing to some of the things that are depicted in the art and, and try to get a sense of how likely it is that there might have been influence. And now jumping into the Aztecs. So considering here we have the, the map of the Aztec capital, this is created during the 1500s, the Aztec's capital, which we'll learn more about later, but it's a really unique capital. It's built in the middle of, of the lake, and they use a variety of means of, of having an exceptionally unique city here at Tenochtitlan. We have the illustration of the Aztec royal dancers. This is coming 1500s, 1600s. But again, this is a great visual here. We can compare some of the uh, way that the Aztecs are depicted in terms of how they're dressed to the mural of Teotihuacan and, and try to make a determination how likely it is that I think that the Teotihuacan civilization might have influenced the Aztecs. And again, they're separated by time, but they're very close in terms of distance. And then we have the Aztec sculpture here. So again, consider these comparisons as we're looking at art and architecture from the various civilizations. We want to keep in mind that major question. How likely do I think it is that the civilization of Teotihuacan influenced that of the Aztecs and the Maya? All right, let's jump into the document. Document A, we do have some primary source uh, objects here. So keep in mind, a primary source doesn't have to be a written source, although many of the times when we look at a primary source, it, it oftentimes is a written source. It doesn't have to be, and that's important to keep in mind. This is a Maya vessel. This ceramic vessel was made by an artist in the Maya lowlands around 900, somewhere between 600 and 900 CE. The Maya lowlands are located in the northern part of present-day Guatemala, about 700 miles southeast of Teotihuacan. So 700 miles, this is a really large distance, especially at the time, right? So you have to keep in mind that no cars, they don't even have horses in uh, the Americas. So horses are coming from the old world to the new world. So uh, walking 700 miles, that's no small task. All right, but we want to keep that in mind. So the distance in that can factor into our determination of how likely we think it is. But then also looking for evidence, right? So studying the vessel, making some comparisons between the artwork of the Maya and the artwork of Teotihuacan. So you definitely could pause this, take a look. You'll have a copy of this within your documents, but uh, your copy is going to be black and white. So I do want to provide this. Also, if you go into Google Classroom, you can access the, the colored version as well. But study this and consider how likely you think it is that the Maya might have been influenced by it. As we read the caption here, our caption is a secondary source. So this is written by Professor Mark Zender. And... He's an anthropologist who studied classic Maya society. And he says the following about the vessel. So we're going to encounter some vocabulary words. Icon refers to a symbol. Import, something brought from a foreign place. And then elements, members of a group in terms of how it's used within the context. The central icon is a large bird with feather fans and other icons that indicate that it's an import from central Mexico. 
And interestingly, central Mexico would refer to the area where Teotihuacan was from the great city of Teotihuacan. When we roll out this image, we see not only this great foreign bird, but also foreign snakes. This was the Maya's attempt to use their own writing and art to come to terms with the elements far outside of their own region. So it's interesting. So some of these elements that are described by the professor, I did see within the mural from the original slideshow from Teotihuacan. And he gives us some insight here, and he's actually even suggesting some of his thoughts in terms of the likelihood that there is some influence there. So go ahead and pause it here. On your paper version of Document A, I want you to identify the sourcing information. So both for the vessel and for the professor's notation and quote regarding the, the vessel. And then also I want you to highlight the portion of uh, Professor Mark Zinder's account here that suggests that there is influence between Teotihuacan and the Maya civilization. So go ahead and pause it here and then we'll go through it together. As we jump into document B, we'll take a look at our sourcing information. Below are translations of writings that come from some Maya monuments created in 379 to 504 CE or AD in the classic Maya city of Tikal in Yuaxtun. The writings were translated by David Stewart, a professor of archeology span at the University of Texas at Austin, who studies classical Maya society. After reading the Maya writings, you will then read David Stewart's ideas about what these monument writings mean. Okay, so let's quickly here identify our sourcing information. We have translation of writings that are coming from the Maya monuments, and we have the time period. We have the location. The translator, his qualifications, and then we'll take a look at his ideas then after. So let's like, like, uh, look at the translations here. In 374 CE or AD, Spear Thrower Owl became king of an unnamed place. Someone named Siakyak arrived in the Maya city of Tikal on January 14. 378 CE or AD, with the approval of Spear Thrower Al. Siakyak came from the west. On the very same day of Siakyak's arrival, the Tikal ruler Jaguar Pa died. Interesting. So that's either a coincidence or maybe there's foul play or some kind of connection between the arrival of this individual, Siakyak and the death of the king, the, the ruler Jaguar Pa. Within a year of Sia Kyak's arrival in Tikal, Spear Thrower Owl's son, Nun Yaksayin, became the ruler of Tikal instead of Jaguar Pa's son. A picture of Nun Yaksayin is carved in the style of Teotihuacan art, not in the usual Maya style. Okay, so this part kind of implies that maybe these outsiders that are coming in and perhaps even positioning themselves in these leadership roles are maybe are coming from Teotihuacan. The source of this unknown Maya authors, monuments from classical Maya cities of Tikal and Yucatan created 379 to 504 CE or AD translated by David Stewart, which we know. All right, so David Stewart's ideas about the monuments writing means. Okay, so this will be interesting. So. It seems like there was a, a change of power. Outsiders are coming in. Sia Kyak's son ends up being the new ruler. Those are the kind of the things that jump out. Well, let's see what the professor says. I conclude that Sia Kyak was a foreigner and may have started Teotihuacan's presence in Tikal. And again, Tikal is one of the Maya city-states. I would speculate that Siakyak was the leader of a military force that overthrew Tikal's dynasty in 378, killing the ruler Jaguar Pa and installing a new ruler, Nun Yaksayin, in his place. So go ahead and pause it. I would like you to highlight the things from the translations that to you jump out as maybe suggesting that there's influence between Teotihuacan and the Maya civilization, as well as important aspects of the professor's thoughts. Now, he's not saying this definitively, and it's important to keep that in mind. 
Go ahead and pause it and then we'll come back together. I think one of the most critical lines of the translations is this one that says, on the very same day of Siakak's arrival, the Tikal ruler Jaguar Pod died. To me, this suggests that this person might have killed Jaguar Paw. It's not stating that definitively. It could be a coincidence. And then lastly, the, the art, the shift in artwork, going from the traditional Maya to more of that of Teotihuacan, it seems really important. And then the professor's conclusion is reinforcing these ideas. Especially this one. Okay, so hopefully um, those sprung out at you. There's others that you might consider. Maybe you have different ideas as well. But let's take a look here at document C. All right, let's take a look and examine document C. The Florentine Codex is an encyclopedia of Aztec history and culture. It was first drafted around 1555 in Tenochtitlan, the Aztec capital. The Spanish priest Bernardino de Sahagón was in charge of the project to make the encyclopedia. He wanted to write a detailed record of Aztec culture with some of his former students who were Aztec men. Sahagón took down the statements of Aztec elders and his students drafted the books in the Aztec language. All right, let's highlight our sourcing information. Go ahead and pause for a moment and do that. So this is coming from the Florentine Codex. It's a primary source. It is being kind of taken from one person and then overseen by another. So I think that is important to keep in mind that the Spanish priest probably had uh, certain reasons to want to portray the Spanish well, to portray the Catholic Church positively. Uh, so that could have influenced what's being recorded. All right, let's take a look at the actual excerpt from the encyclopedia. Book 3, Chapter 1. How and where the gods began is not well known, but this is clear. At Teotihuacan, long ago, when there was still darkness, all the gods gathered together and debated who would become the sun. Then all the gods died so that the sun might come into being. Book 10, Chapter 29. Long ago, the Aztecs moved from the northern desert lands to the Valley of Mexico. Behold the story which the ancients told. On their long journey, the Aztecs made offerings at a place named Teotihuacan. There they raised pyramids for the sun and for the moon. Then they made many small pyramids where offerings were made. At Teotihuacan, their leaders were elected, and when the rulers died, the Aztecs buried them there and built a pyramid over them. The pyramids now stand like small mountains, though they were made by hand. And so they named it Teotihuacan because it was the burial place for the rulers. For it was said, when we die, it is not true that we die, for we still live. For still we live. We are resurrected. We awaken. Thus the ancients said the ruler who died became a god, so that those who were rulers would be obeyed. All were worshipped as gods when they died. Some became the sun, some the moon, etc. And then again, we have our sourcing information. So I would like you to identify first, highlight and annotate, according to this document, where and how was the sun created? So go ahead and pause for a second and see if you can figure that one out. Highlight where it's addressed. Okay, so according to our document, it states that the sun is created in Teotihuacan long ago. At this meeting of the gods, where the gods are deciding, according to the Aztec tradition, which one of them will become the sun. So we have an immediate connection between the, the areas. The next thing I'd like you to try to consider and annotate is according to this document, who built the pyramids at Teotihuacan? This is a really interesting aspect. So go ahead and pause, highlight, according to this document, who built the pyramids at Teotihuacan? It's really interesting. The Aztecs are actually taking credit. Although, according to what we know, they couldn't possibly have done this. 
um, because of the timeline. On their long journey, the Aztecs made offerings at a place named Teotihuacan. There they raised pyramids for the sun and for the moon. Then they made many small pyramids when, uh, where offerings were made. So really interesting, the Aztecs are taking credit based on document C. All right, so now that we've done our annotations, I'd like you to go through, consider these questions, make sure you're writing detailed sentences for each question. And then as we get to the last question here, this is going to involve a more in-depth uh, response. What is one question this vessel does not answer about the influence Teotihuacan had on classical Maya society? So consider that. We'll go through and, and answer all these questions. This first set's based on document A. We have document B questions. And then finally, questions for document C. Again, make sure we're doing detailed sentences as our response. Refer back to the documents to support your claims as well. Your annotations and your highlights should help you. So I hope you enjoyed looking at the documents. I hope you learned a lot. We'll see you next time.